Welcome back everyone. We are here again for some trading card game action. We are actually in round number seven, so the last round of the Swiss rounds here at the TCG Masters at the Arena Cup in Würzburg. And we have a very interesting matchup coming up to be us. Yeah, we have uh, Günther playing Excelgor Trevenant. And we have David Storm, who is the current German champion, and he is playing some Evolutions. So for David Sturm to make it to the top eight cut, he would only need to draw, obviously. However, Günther, on the other hand, he needs to win this match. Yep. This is exactly what makes this so interesting. As we jump right into the game, we see David on the left-hand side and Günther on the right side wearing that base cap, but we will zoom a little bit in so that you can see the cards a little bit better. From viewing the first cards already, you can tell that David is playing Vespi Queen with a couple of unknowns to get a couple of Pokemon into the discard pile. Yeah, the unknown is a new card from Ancient Origins. Uh, pretty interesting, actually, as long as it's on your bench, you can simply discard it and draw a card. <laughs> and what I like <laughs> about Günther here, uh, if you notice, he laid his hand down on the table because he knows David's first turn will take a couple of minutes here. Because he's going to play some battle compressors, he's trying to get as many Pokemon into the discard pile as possible, and Günther knows that he will be able to come back after five minutes, maybe go to the restrooms and then <laughs> see how the situation <laughs> develops. Yeah. So it's still David's turn, he played an N, which is currently right next to Eevee. Yeah, you see a double colorless in his hand, so you can decide if he is willing to play it right now. It's also nice to see that he's playing um, both different kind of Eevees. Yeah, he is, he is um, playing Vespi Queen and the Flareon from Plasma. So he has both Vespi Queen, four of them, and four of the Flareons. So he has basically eight attackers which are doing the same thing for a double colorless energy. They are dealing 20 plus 10 damage for each Pokemon that is residing in his discard pile. Yeah, and he has probably an answer to every kind of weakness. And also what you notice is he's playing different, different kinds of Eevees, one of which is currently active with a Silver Bangle, with Signs of Evolution from Plasma Freeze, and the rather newer one from Furious Fists is currently on the bench twice. And Günther bringing out that item lock with the Wally Supporter card. Trevenant is now active, and if it remains active, David is not allowed to play any item cards during his turn. This might be huge, because it's really dependent on how many Pokemon is David able to... Oh, look at it this. It was not uh, such a long... No, Günther turn. has a very bad hand, I guess. <coughs> so let's see. He is doing 20 base damage. Silver Bengal does not affect Trevenant. No. Does and he have any Pokemon? Trevenant One. has... How many? 130? <coughs> I just see that there are three Pokemon in the discard pile, so Flareon is dealing 50 damage right now. Oh yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, and that's just uh, Evolution Soda, so that's not going to help Günther whatsoever. But well, he got a, not a basic Pokemon at least. And there's a Lysander, so he might buy some time. Oh, he has a Computer Search, I didn't see that. Why didn't he play this last turn? I think he, he drew a Evo Soda. Doesn't matter, he now he is able to come back with a supporter card like Professor Juniper. Doesn't reveal it, he knows he doesn't have to. But David is looking strong already. His setup is almost complete. If he was allowed to play item cards, it would be even perfect. Yep. And there's a life dew, you can see next to Vespi Queen, so he's deciding not to play Computer Search. And there's Günther's Professor Juniper, right next to a Mew EX. Is Günther playing the new uh, stadium from Ancient Origins? I see the evil sword and notes Verbank City, Jim, just once. At least. And free tropical beach. Oh, I didn't notice that. So this keeps Trevenant yeah. out there even longer. I was just wondering if he's going maybe for um, evolving that Excel Gore. And there's this helmet. Floatstone. So he's, he's slowly but surely setting up. Getting this Mew ready, using uh, Shaman's attack actually, so he's stealing that attack from David's Shaman, dealing 30 damage and promoting his Trevenant again. We will see these kind of shenanigans during uh, this game very often. 
also Vesper Queen getting some power while David is discarding some of his Pokemon. We can't see how many there are, but we will see yep. soon. Probably also mostly item cards since he is locked on both. So he has to find another way uh, to get um, a lot of Pokemons into his discard pile. I think there were three among them with that Professor Sycamore, but I can't tell because they are right underneath David's name. Odino? Yes, but he's playing Odino. So he got a way out to get out of the Paralyze. And it's enough to knock out that Trevenant. Trevenant is going to become his active Pokemon. Beselgor, and here we go. Level ball. Choose one Pokemon within your deck that has 90 HP or less, and he chooses to play Shelmet. Didn't really shuffle his deck because he knows there's something more coming up, and there's this nice and clean chorus dressed yep. for business. Nine cards, nice and clean. Not so sure how clean it is. I mean, you can't really see the backside of a card. I think it's clean. Okay, we're talking Günther here. So you know him? Yeah, Günther is quite often to be seen um, at events in Munich, at Funtainment. I enjoy playing with him, even though he's much better than I am. And Who here we go. Who isn't exactly? And he chooses Mew to shuffle it back into his deck. Now Flarion is paralyzed, poisoned, the whole shenanigans. And almost shuffled back into the deck and knocked almost out. knocked out, exactly. But that is where the Odino could be huge. I you don't see it and he's not allowed to play the Ultra Ball, so for yeah. David it's a tough spot now. And this is the worst thing that could happen because that Flareon is going to be knocked out after his turn, so the next Pokemon might be affected by a Selgor's attack as well and be paralyzed and poisoned and not able to attack. Uh, he is playing an Ultra Ball? Um. Isn't Trevenant active? You are not allowed to play Ultra Ball. Oh wow, this is where Judge comes in. I can't believe it. Oh, he's playing... <laughs> oh no, I don't think this is allowed, no. I think a Judge should come up very soon. He's playing... Uh, How's it called in English? Uh, Hex Maniac. The, the Hex Maniac. But afterwards, he was looking at his deck already, trying to justify that he played Ultra Ball. Wow. Yeah, but... And it, it looks like Günther is, uh, is fine with it. There won't be much punishment. He uh, is simply not allowed to play the Ultra Ball. He has to take it back, gets a warning for it. And then he simply can continue playing the Hex Maniac and... Okay, so and then he can we just noticed that Günther uh, said he doesn't need a judge here. So that only speaks for Günther. He realized it's not going to change the situation. Uh, David was just uh, a little bit too fast in his actions. But it, it shows you that it's a nice card to play, the Hex Maniac. It's really important to have a card like this as a tech, maybe for decks like uh, the way the one Günther is playing. It's um, also interesting that he, uh, Günther can't attack with Mew now, <coughs> right? Exactly, because all Pokemon powers are off until the end of Günther's turn. Yeah. But afterwards, the item lock is back on and David is not allowed to play Versus Seeker to regain <laughs> that. I can imagine that card <laughs> caused a lot of trouble since people may forget it that Tex Maniac was played last turn and now no abilities. I think so too, absolutely. While Günther is now playing Ultra Ball, hopefully he's not using <laughs> a Shaman and then using its power. <laughs> That's exactly what happens. No, no, oh. don't do it. Go. All powers are off. It's Hex Maniac. It's still active. Shaman is not allowed to be played, and David doesn't notice. Now, while Günther is getting out his N, someone will have to notify that he's not allowed a to use it. And that is, that is pretty bad now for Günther, since um, that's a tough call to David if he allows, allows Günther to take that Jirachi back. In my opinion, now David should return the favor, <laughs> because Günther was... Uh, was allowing him to do what he did, because if he proceeded with the Ultra Ball and the Ultra Ball was played, then David maybe ha would have played a different uh, supporter, right? And then it was only necessary to play the uh, Hex Maniac um, now that he noticed. And 
Yeah, they are discussing what to do now. I think they are trying to rule it out without a judge. Judges here. Yeah, judges on the table. You know, this is the last round of the Masters. It's so important yeah. to stay focused, but this day has been going on for so long. But the state of the game is easy to turn back here, has to give back the N. We saw mm. that it was an N. Everyone saw the, the N. The deck was random before and will be random after. Now it's just the decision if David allows him to take it back. Here's the end. Everyone noticed it was the end. We know it was the end. Shuffle it back into the deck. I agree. Yeah. And, and the deck this is, is still random. Yeah, and the Jirachi should uh, stay on the bench, I think. Yeah, here we go again. Notice these players are playing for 12 hours straight now. Some of them haven't gotten to eat. Anything, <laughs> including us. <laughs> and just uh, I predicted <laughs> with the Hex Maniac. <laughs> and the Hex Maniac, exactly, you called it. <laughs> <laughs> this card is causing trouble. Maybe there should be a sentence, keep Hex Maniac in play until the effect wears off or something. Everyone knows it's in the discard pile, but yeah. Well, yep. David is retreating his Eevee uh, in favor of Vespi Queen, which is now able to attack. And Gunther is counting out the amount of Pokemon in the discard pile, which... Did you count up them as well? It was no, I, but we will see this soon with the damage counters. Oh, and it's gone. Well, yeah, it's enough. It's enough. David doesn't even bother spreading and it out. It won't really reduce any further. So everything will be... Uh, A one-hit KO. I agree. Yeah. Even now the here's the judge that will actually work, and here's the end that will actually work. And now we will also see how many prize cards David has drawn so far because I can't see. I don't know why would you do this, but <laughs> why don't you spread out your prize cards nice and clean like everyone does? Here's the end. Five cards for Gunther. How many for David? That's ah, like hard to say. Yeah, he always keeps a stack of them. He doesn't spread them yeah, out. Yeah, we should tell him to... Uh, like three or so. Put them part of each other. It's not that it's not allowed or so, but... It's just well nice when you are playing on on the featured match. One, two, three, four prize cards left. There is town map. Yeah. Not too bad. He has another Trevenant out there, so this one isn't hurting him so much as of now. A Selgor just came out, so he can attack with it. Poison, Paralyze, do all the shenanigans. David is not playing Verzian X, so he's not coming out of that situation anytime soon. But it's funny, compared to the uh, games we had before, we haven't seen any stadium yet. That's right. There's no Tropical Beat from Gunther, and I think he currently doesn't need it either, because he doesn't have any damage counters on his Pokémon. And David is not playing any stadiums at all. Is David not playing any po No? No, he isn't. Well, that might explain why we don't have any Stadium Wars going on so far. There's a Cold Rest coming from David for nine cards, that is. <coughs> Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, it's nine. <laughs> Ordino, just the card he needed. And yep. that's going to be the KO on Trevenant. That's important. He only allowed to remove one special condition? Or does it remove either damage or all special conditions? Not quite sure on Ordino's ability. Well, I will find out in a second. Maybe you know play on. But at least there is no Trevenant in game anymore for Günther. And it's not going to be in game anytime soon because it's missing its pre evolution. So David is free to play item cards from now on. At well, least you can for the next round. still solve it with Wally, but well, not anymore since he played the end yeah. now. So, yes, he's free to play item cards on his next turn, probably.
So Quinter's taking his time now to decide what he's going to do after his N. And going for the knockout and has to reshuffle Exelgor. He's not allowed to get a prize card. Hopefully he's not grabbing it. <laughs> True, that was for life too. And Flareon is going to pick up that KO on Jirachi rather easily. And there we see the first item card for David in quite some turns now. Getting rid of cards he is not needing. Mostly item cards. <laughs> yeah, removing two battle compressors and a silver bangle. Doesn't need the silver bangle to kill the Hiyarchis. Nope. So he's there yet. He doesn't need any more Pokemon. He knows that he one hit KOs every Pokemon that Gunther can come up with. <laughs> and he's yeah. grabbing that Jirachi like it's his <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, even hitting it for weakness for like <laughs> 300 damage at least. Now what's coming up now? He has some options, but it doesn't really look good for Gunther. Yeah, unfortunately, there won't be any statistics when the game is over. This is not <coughs> the trading card game online. This is the real game. It's a real thing. There's another N bringing down David's hand to one, but at this point I'm not sure if that's even doing any good for Gunther because that Flareon is ready to attack next round. And what can Gunther come up with? Another shell mid. Well, there's a Mew. Now, what kind of attack does he have access to? Can he potentially attack Flareon with its own attack? Or he... I know he used Eselgor's attack, which yep. is good. Now but I wonder if he may might have checked his discard pile. Maybe he could have knocked it off, but... Mm. It doesn't really matter if there's a Rachi or a Mew in the active spot. Um, no, David any, any knockout is crucial. I think David I played a Professor Sycamore. Oh, he's going for the Ordino. And he gets it, and that's good game. 1-0 goes to yeah. David. Ordino is huge in that matchup. And also the Hex Maniac helps him a lot. It's interesting, the Hex Maniac. I saw it for the very first time in a competitive environment right now and actually worked out perfectly. Um, I'm wondering if that Hex Maniac is in David's deck just because of a matchup just like this. Yeah. Uh, and also, it's only in there once, so it might happen that he is discarding it. Of course, he can always use the battle compressor to discard it, but he has to find it from his deck. He can't get it via yeah. versus seeker. But, but but still, getting one turn to get out of an item lock is actually huge for this deck. Yeah, it will work against Wild Plume. It will yes. work against Trevenant, as we saw. It won't work yeah. against Seismitoad, obviously. And if, if you were going to watch at the history of uh, last year's Arena Cups which was already in the expanded format. Mm. Exelgor was always a big play. <coughs> I think it uh, took two wins in the uh, past Arena Cups. So this is definitely a deck you need to be prepared for. Yeah, and I think uh, Life Juice is also working well here for him. Um, he has a very nice way of exploiting most of the weaknesses in the current meta game. He's playing Flareon, which is very good from those metal decks out there. There's a lot of metal Rayquazas out there. And at the same time, Seismitoad is present all the time. The only thing he's missing, and I'm wondering if that might be an option for him, is one playing one Jolteon, just because of those many Rayquazas out there and also the Evil Tarts. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff uh, with Lightning Weakness. Looking at his deck, I see of obviously he's playing four Eevees. I'm wondering if it would hurt the consistency of his deck by just adding one Jolteon. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering what he's thinking about this, and I uh, would like to ask him afterwards, after the tournament is over, uh, just to get his impression on it. Maybe he 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 uh, already checked it and tested it and didn't think it was worth it. I'm really curious to hear from him. Now, Günther uh, decides to go first. Remember that first turn Günther had, it was an absolute nightmare. He was only able to play Warly and pass the turn over to David. Now, let's see what he's able to pull off right well now. I think and this has to be Warly. Be yeah, Wally, yeah, there's the Warly. Very well done. Item lock is on, and this is so important for David. David is unable to use his battle compressors right now. Mm. And now we see the Tropical Beach. Yeah. And I'm also wondering why uh, David decided to go with an unknown in the active spot. You cannot use his ability if it's your active Pokemon. You can use it only on your bench. 
Exactly. So maybe, hmm. Yeah, he can't use it now. Uh, and also, I, mis I was mistaking Tropical Beach with Champions Festival. Obviously, with Tropical Beach, you are drawing cards. You're not healing off uh, any damage. As he decides to place another unknown on the bench, then there's Eevee and there's Shaman. Shaman will not be stopped by Trevenant, only item cards like that silver bangle in his hand. There's a combi. And one more space on his bench. And there's a Sycamore. Maybe he's deciding to discard that Shaman with Sycamore because he needs to get some Pokemon into his discard pile. Yeah. And it would also be good to have uh, another bench space. <coughs> <coughs> now what's going on? Oh, I think he threw one card too much. Oh, not again. Now what's happening? Hmm. And he finished his turn? I'm wondering what, what happened right there. Could have also been with Tropical Beach at the end. And he played uh, basic Pokemon after drawing for Beach. Yeah, I w uh, the Shaman draw up to six. But he had seven cards in his hand. But where's the Beach? So Yeah, I'm wondering as well, was it the Tropical Beach or not? So his turn would end if he decides to draw up to yeah. seven cards, and there's no way he could have uh, with Shaman, obviously. So if there was a seven card in hand, his turn is over, obviously. Günther was right. And now David is ending his turn without playing a supporter card. And now Günther is pulling off his tricks, getting in Mew. Oh, he's now... Yeah, he decided to... Sky return again? Was it Sky no. Return? There if is no Excel go on game more. And there, but there would not have been. But he, he took it to hand. Yeah, but there's weakness from Unknown. So Unknown is knocked out. So yeah. it has to be Sky Return. Yes. And uh, Unknown is knocked out. And now David is to decide which Pokemon to promote. Oh, that's kind of giving up on Shaman already. Otherwise. He will have to draw a double color. This there's three Pokemon now in this card pile. That's important, and I like how David is lining them up. So we can see, oh, there's this double color. This that's important to save that Shaman. Yeah, it's better to uh, sacrifice the Shaman instead of his main attacker. <coughs> he wasn't sure if he can get the Flareon this turn. So he might sacrifice a combi. He has a lot of them. We will have to sacrifice something. That's the double color. This. And he could still draw one more card from his unknown. I am wondering as well why it's waiting on this. Um, at the same time, he has Ordino in hand. He knows he... No, he's not going to use Tropical Beat this, this round. Yeah, there's a guy return, 30 damage. Hmm, interesting. Maybe he notices right now, <laughs> hey, there's an unknown, I could have used that. <laughs> and now he's promoting that combi. There's another Aselgore. And here's that Mew. We missed one turn ago. What was Gunther going to do? Does he have a supporter to go with? Lysander on that Eevee would be huge. Oh, he's uh, decided to uh, use Tropical Beach. Oh, that's interesting. Now, that's a very nice part of his deck. And I'm really curious to try that one out. Günther decides that there's no way that David can pile up enough Pokemon in his discard pile to really threaten my Trevenant. And even if so, he has another Trevenant on his bench. So he wants to get into a better position, potentially getting a Lysander hmm. um, to then... One them. Well, already free in the discard pile. Yes, but unknown. But he... Hmm. Yeah, that's 60 damage with that unknown right there. But I don't know why he's not using it. So he's one Pokemon short, actually, only. Oh, it's 130, sorry. So that was another Sky Return. Yes, and he still didn't use that unknown. Which combi to take? I would take the left one. Hmm. 
Yeah. Nah, mm. I would have taken the left one. I don't think the right one is the right decision. Uh, the um, thoughts about the uh, Vespican um, was actually interesting. Um, since it s will survive uh, an attack from Excelgor or Mew, and then he could use the Odino to get it out of Paralyze. And then could it attack with it again, but yes. um, maybe he decides that Combi is better off in the discard pile. <laughs> Maybe he needs to get some Pokemon in the discard pile. And now, yeah. this is exactly what Gunther was looking for. Lysander on that Eevee, which is going to be uh, defeated by this time Mew. Mew is returning to Gunther's deck, and now Vespi Queen is back on. Now with Eevee, there are four cards, four Pokemon cards in David's discard pile. Yep. Allowing Vespi Queen to hit for 60. And that unknown is really <coughs> annoying <coughs> We really would like to know <coughs> why it's still sitting on the bench. With that one, it would be 70. David carefully weighing his options. Yeah, going for the knockout. Maybe he figures he doesn't need that. Maybe he thinks that unknown can be good for another yeah. Pokemon to be <laughs> left for Gunther to defeat. I'm not sure. Yeah, it might be. There's another N. However, I feel that David doesn't have any draw engine. It was a long time ago that he was playing a supporter card. <laughs> yeah, true. So, four cards for Gunther. I think five for David. Five, yep. There's an Eevee, a Lysander in there. That Lysander won't do him very good. So that's, what was it, 60 damage? It should be paralyzed, shouldn't it? Yeah, it should. That N actually was huge because we know that David had an Arduino in his hand. And now he had to shuffle it back in. I didn't see it. And Gunther also played Town Map. You can see a double color list. That's always nice to see in your prize cards. If you need it, you can yeah. just take it. I can imagine. Uh, remember, <coughs> last Arena Cup I was um, featuring a um, similar match. It was uh, at least a Xelgor, uh, Trevenant um, deck. And one player had four cards left in his deck. It was four double color list energies. Oh, that's so He was so, so unlucky. Now I'm, I'm wondering, is David preparing an attack? Now with Lysander, obviously he now can play item cards and he is going to make use of them. But what attack did Gunther use? I think he was attacking with Mew and I don't see it in his hand anymore. So I think he used the Selgos attack. Yeah, of course. But Vespi Queen is not paralyzed according to... I may be both no and we're just too lazy to turn it to the side. I hope so. It's still against the rules, but... We have to have an eye on it if he's going to use an attack or not. Yeah. So now it it's should seven be paralyzed. Pokemon in the discard pile. There's another Ultra Ball. Now he's using that unknown. It's eight Pokemon in the discard pile. Dratry, interesting. He doesn't need to play Dratry now because he has played Lysander during the game. But now he could already. get the Odino. Now that Odino could be huge. Yep, and Odino is picked. And here we uh, go. He's going to heal. I think it's both, isn't it? No, it's it's either way. You can choose. Now he, it's still poisoned. Maybe Günther used a different attack. Not sure which one though. Maybe he used, um, no. I'm really puzzled now by this situation. As you can probably tell, we can only see what the players are doing. We can't hear them. Yeah. That's also good because the players shouldn't be hearing us as we are seeing their cards in hand. That was knockout through poison. And Trevenant is active. Now let's see if David can recover from this. Oh, there's a Professor Sycamore. Wow. <laughs> That's like the ideal hand to have. If he's now top decking a Vespi Queen, 
Ah, he's not. Well, he still can draw there's one more card. There's a double colorless. If he's top decking that Vesper Queen, that would be awesome for him. He's no. not, no. Well, fire energy, you could can get the Flareon. But it still cannot attack this turn. It yeah. needs two colorless energies. He could use the power. However, he discarded some Flareons w with his Battle Compressor. Let's see if there's one left. Should know if there's one left. Yeah, there it is. There's one left. He's looking through his deck. I don't see any Vesper Queens left there. Isn't just the one on the top one? Was there one? Yeah, I think so. Oh yeah, and there's no Tropical Beach anymore. So he simply passed his turn. Oh, Lysander, very nice move. Is it enough? Does he have the attack to do it with? Yeah, with World Bank City, it's 90. Yeah. Sorry, 80. 80. 80. Yeah, 50 base damage. From and Turret that's again a Excel very goal. tough situation. I think I saw an Ordino in David's hand. Yeah, there's one. So he can attack. There's also double colorless. That Florian can attack, but will go down in the same turn. Yeah. Tough decision. If you're going for it. Nicely done by Günther, anticipating that Flareon before it became a problem. And that Flareon can only knock out one of the Trevenants, not both of them. And there's always a Mew in Günther's hand. Maybe David is pondering about playing an N to get rid of that Mew, which is always coming back. Oh, oh and, and he decided to wow. attach a double colorless also. So is he Flareon. sacrificing his Flareon in favor of getting a uh, nice and clean Vesper Queen? And the downside is also that he has to promote something at the end of his <coughs> turn after the poison knockout on Flareon. And that will be two easy price cards for Günther then, if he manages to find something which can attack now. There's Vesper Queen. Alex Selgor himself can also. But I don't think it has any energy, does it? Well, yeah, but... Oh, interesting. David yeah. decides to not evolve his Vesper Queen just yet. Oh, yeah, and there's... Oh, I just want to say he gets in double colorless, but he decides to take the Juniper from his prizes. Yes. So there's a shell mid. Level ball. Oh, look at the stack. It's rather thinned out. Yeah. <laughs> so the odds of getting a Mew and double colorless energy every turn gets uh, quite high in the end of yeah. the match. <laughs> if you don't know, a Selgor's attack, which is mimicked by Mew, is to do 50 damage, poison your opponent's Pokémon, the active Pokémon, paralyze it, and then your active Pokémon with all cards attached will be shuffled into your deck. <laughs> so, <laughs> the thinner your deck, obviously, the higher the chances to get that Pokémon and all cards attached again. Oh, doesn't like what he sees. I don't see a double color this there. That might be misturned. Oh yeah, he passed already. He passed. There's Vesper Queen, and yeah. we are back. <laughs> we are back in uh, Vesper Queen City here. So taking not for double colorless was actually. Oh, uh, here it is, just in time delivery. A close decision, but well, the odds are high, but it's not 100% to get a double colorless from Unifa, even if your deck is really thin. There are eight. No. Yeah, there's 80 damage being dealt to Vesper Queen, and I saw an Ordino in David's hand, so he can choose. Does he want to heal that paralysis <laughs> and attack, but at the same time lose that Vesper Queen, and then Günther can attack one more time, and both Combi and Eevee would fall to any attack from the Aselgor. Wow. And David is a little puzzled. No, that is still intact, that Vesper Queen. <laughs> He's shuffling the two cards. <laughs> <laughs> is it really on two? I think it's four or something. Okay. Because there's double colorless and a float stone. Here's Shaman. Uh, well, or oh there's Lysander. Um, he could use Lysander to be allowed to play item cards again, but I don't think there are any item cards he really needs to play right now. Yeah, it could be only good if there would be one Exilgo left in game. I saw two Ordinos, so that could be huge. He could heal Paralysis and Poison at the same time. 
Are these two? Oh, they're actually three Ordinos. Are these three Ordinos? Is he playing so many? No, he's actually only playing two. So what kind of cards are there? These cards I look like Ordinos. I just wanted to say, if it's two Ordinos, you could also uh, cure the Paralyze and retreat, maybe, and save one Ordino for another Paralyze. Oh, they later. are Ultra Balls. Oh, that's what it oh, is. Oh, you, you, you mixed up Ultra Balls with Ordino? Yeah, well... It was a long day for you. Yeah, I have to see uh, my optician. There's one Ordino. Yeah. <laughs> now I agree on that. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, we agree on something. Let's see what he's going to do with it. Yeah, he's certainly going to pick it. But what now? He has three price cards left. The clock is ticking already. So, another shaman. What is he fishing for? But it seems like oh, Odino is, is really doing one? both healing and removing the special conditions because yeah, he I just think so too. <coughs> I think there's only one card left in David's stack. He might be going out for an end now. Hmm. Just to make sure that he's not be he's not going to be item locked. <coughs> yeah, he has to get that N. He can't draw three price cards in two turns. Yeah, that will be a bit hard. And it got pre retreat as we can. Vesper Queen with free retreat, that's what it has as an advantage uh, compared to the Flarian. Yep. However, it has 10 less HP, which can make all the difference. And this is Selgor is knocked out. Gunter's turn. There's a float stone. <laughs> <laughs> He's almost crushing his own cards there. Mew is making an appearance, allowing him to use a Selgor's attack. And there's an Ultra Ball. What is he going for? Another Shelmet? <laughs> yeah. Now it's two cards. And now this is a very tough spot for David. It's again poisoned, no, it's, it's paralyzed, and this paralysis is here to stay. There's no item card he can play because of Trevenant. It's the last can in the, uh, card in the deck. There's no Odino anymore. Um, he has to play that N now with two cards left. Günther is drawing two cards, so his deck will remain the same. I don't see a way for David to really bounce back from this. There's the life-saving N. He's already pondering. Yeah, he has to play it. He's going down to two cards, but at the same time, I'm not really sure how he wants to fight back from it. Günther will be able to attack next turn, and uh, Vesper Queen will be knocked on in between turns. Yeah. And there's two prizes left for Günther. <laughs> but is there any Exelgor left in Günther's deck? Yes, um, he shuffled it in uh, his deck. Um, okay, I thought it was Mew and uh, Double Colorless. Yeah, both. Uh, both Mew and Eselga were shuffled back in, so okay. that's why he uh, chose to go with Ultra Ball. There's a Double Colorless, just to make sure he has it. He needs a Mew on Eselga. There's this Mew. Oh, he has a Mew in his hand already. But he got the Eselga already. But I thought if he could maybe uh, knock Hebo out the uh, Eselga. Here we go. Here's Eselga. Then there's nothing to copy from you, but he could still copy the Vengeance, which should be probably enough to get the knockout. Yeah, oh, again, uh, I still wonder, why, why isn't uh, he counting his discard pile? Maybe Vengeance yeah. would have been enough to get the I was thinking hit. the same thing. Um, maybe there's just not enough Pokemon. Yeah, David is giving up. He knows there's no way he can recover. So Günther is going the safe way. He thinks there's no way that he's playing more than two Ordinos um, in his deck and uh, decides to paralyze that Shaman, coming back and making it 1-1 with only 11 minutes on the clock. So in between turns now, the players are shuffling their cards for Günther. This might be the last match, the last game of today, yeah. so he has to be pumped to be able to maybe turn around this game. Now, with only 10 minutes left on the clock, yeah, who do just you like to, to move say. forward? It's hard to say. I mean, the item lock was always early and it's so easy to get with uh, Wally. -E. Um, so a quick start for David is not really possible with getting mm. battle compressors and but uh, on the other hand, uh, David can have <coughs> a first turn now, so he can use his first turn without yes. item lock to get uh, enough Pokemon in his discard pile. And when streaming the attacks with Vengeance, it 
I think the first seven cards will be crucial for David. Of course, he's going to go first. And if he's going to be able to get those battle compressors, and he has many ways to do it, going with Shaman, discarding those unknowns, he has to get as many Pokemon into his discard pile as possible. And if he can manage, I think then Günther is going to have a, a hard time in yeah, those 10 minutes. But still, achieving the one hit is easy. But uh, Günther will not just sit there and do nothing. I mean, there will be the Paralyze, and uh, that will just um, grind out the time. I don't think that less than 10 minutes is enough to take six prizes in that matchup. And what I like about both players is they realized the time is short. They shuffled up as fast as they can. They want to hop back into that game. And as we can see, David is starting and he's off to a good start with one comp better compressor already. Yeah. It doesn't look mm, too bad for Günther as well. But it could be hard to get the item lock since Mew is in the <coughs> active spot and he can't use um, Exelgor's attack in the first turn. S um, well, he could if he use Wally to um, evolve his Shelmet, but then he still has no item lock. There's no, uh, there wouldn't be any item lock exactly. There would only be a paralyzed, or in this case, it would be a defeated Eevee. And for everyone who is wondering, Ordino's ability does indeed heal 10 damage and at the same time you can choose one special condition on uh, your Pokemon and heal it. Okay. Not both, but both effects will take place. 10 heal damage and one special condition healed. So everything was doing correct. Now again, Günther <laughs> laying down his hands. He knows this mm. turn is going to go on for a couple of minutes here. There's another Ultra Ball. He's going to make use of and Günther is nicely aligning discarded Pokémon and trainer cards. Here's that Eevee with fire energy. It's kind of taking a little risk, in my opinion, because there's always the chance that Günther can immediately defeat that Eevee yep. by using Wally. I'm wondering if David is calculating that into his considerations here. Not quite sure. But now he could also... Uh now Günther is maybe checking his options. He's but looking at his Now it's, die. it's actually possible to get the item lock. If he uh, use Wally to get Trevenant and then copy with Mew the Sky Return of Shaman. This way he gets Mew and double colorless back to his hand and can promote Trevenant in the active spot and has his item lock. Thanks to David's Shaman. Yeah, he would also need that Phantom uh, to use Wally on, but, but there's a couple of options. A there's level, level ball. ball. Yeah, there's level ball. I see level ball. So he's considering: is he going to level ball for a Jirachi? Does he need the Jirachi? Does he need? Yeah, there we go. It's going to be Jirachi. He's checking if all the cards he needs are in his deck. Indeed, he's going with Jirachi. He's allowed to do it. There's no Hex Maniac. <laughs> Hex Maniac already hit the discard pile from David. I saw that and. He's going to go with Professor Juniper, I think. Uh, there's another level ball for Phantom. Mm. So he could have actually gotten it if he have would have a double colorless. Yes, I think the double colorless is missing. Yeah, so that's the safer play. And there's another Ultra Ball. So not looking too bad for Günther. He's setting up. Maybe another Phantom. I think another Phantom is coming up. Yeah, probably since you want. He's oh using Shelmet. Shelmet. He figures David might aim for these Selgors. And the Shelmet is the nice uh, League Challenge promo, actually. If you haven't noticed. It was? Oh, yeah, actually. Oh, it has a nice and shiny. Oh, I like nice and shiny. But we can't see which place it is. There are four different <coughs> ones. <coughs> but now I'm wondering for David to avoid that item lock, he can uh, aim that Phantom. I'm wondering if Günther is considering. Using Wally next turn in case that uh, Phantom goes down to a Lysander. He and doesn't he have a double colorless and no no way of evolving, no way of using Sky Return. David is free to use item cards this turn as well. So this could get interesting, but the time is ticking. So it's already 50 base damage from Vengeance thanks to the Silver Bangle without having any Pokemon discarded. But we know he already have some. It's hard to see for us <coughs> how many, but... 
Oh, the Hex Maniac is... Um, he's retrieving that Hex Maniac just in case. Oh, he's playing it right now. Yeah. It was just to uh, shut off the uh, attack of view, probably. And he can't attack either, so... But he has Professor Sycamore in his hand, I think. Do I see correctly? Yeah, there it yes. is. Hmm. That's some high-level play right there. And I'm saying high level because I don't understand it. <laughs> 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 Probably David is playing on a higher level than I am. And that's for sure. So I don't understand what he's doing. I would opt for... I'd go for that Professor Sycamore last turn and try to get as many Pokemon into the discard pile as I can. But at least he's quite experienced with the stack since um, oh, absolutely. he used a similar version to claim the champion title for the oh, absolutely. German Championship. However, he has to know that next turn uh, he's going to be item locked already. Because now, yeah, there's the float stone. Now the item lock is on. And now if he's it is. Playing, yeah, now it is. And now, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> he is getting that battle compressor. He has the Professor Sycamore in hand. Um, however, I think he has six Pokemon in his discard pile already. And he's going for Lysander. But does he and have still has no, no energy? Yeah, that's too bad. Well, there's hmm. Chorus fishing for another Floatstone, maybe. Yep, probably Floatstone. Floatstone and Double Colorless will do the trick and put a lot yeah. of pressure on Flareon. But uh, Double Colorless would be crucial. I mean, he, when he can't attack, he can just apply the item lock again. Oh, there's Double Colorless. I don't see... Oh, there's a Floatstone as well. So he can retreat it, use Mew, attack with a Selgos attack, poison and paralyze that Flareon. And now David, who is taking his sweet time during the last turns, is now in big trouble. I'm wondering why he opted to go with Lysander and Hex Maniac. Now here's that Ordino. Maybe also now the Sycamore is going to hit the field. Just want to say maybe he, he has that he planned this to draw from his opponent deck. <laughs> <coughs> exactly. Yeah. Give me your deck, Gunter. You're playing much better deck than I am. Now he has lots of energy cards. I'm wondering if he planned this all along, and how many Pokemon Pokemon does he have? Six plus two. I think that's eighty. That's a hundred. I think. Or oh, there's another unknown. That's a hundred and ten. Is that an unknown? No, there was no unknown. It's Shaman. That's a combi. No. <laughs> well, yes, no, maybe. Another <laughs> shaman. Another shaman. Oh, he's oh another shaman. <laughs> yeah, he could have. Oh no, it's just not enough. Yeah, one hundred damage. It also seems like there's no float stone on. Trevenant, Trevenant is barely hanging on here, and Günther now. Ultra balling, maybe for another phantom. Just to make sure that item lock is here to stay. Yeah. Wonder if we can There's get no it float stone back from There's no float stone on that Trevenant, so well that's a little risky. Now drawing ten cards, it's uh quite good odds to get the float stone maybe. How many float stones does he play? Um Günther is playing four float stones. Hmm. Ten cards. And yeah. Yeah, there it is. Uh, uh, even two float stones. <laughs> float stone actually in the current standard format is not another allowed to be played. Um, in XY8, it will be back. I'm actually not happy about that. Why are you not happy about that? I don't know. It makes it... Um, but it shut it down some strategies. <coughs> and um, there are still a lot of strategies available even without float stone. Um, of course, uh, many strategies make the game interesting, but... I am not well, a really fan. There's an important announcement. It was timeout, and I think neither player has gotten to draw a prize card yet. Günther is going to draw a prize card yet, but I don't think he's able to draw six prize cards. We are still in the Swiss rounds, and this might mean that David is getting what he wanted. Yeah. This could be a draw, and this has to be a draw. Yeah. But uh, for Günther, that's uh, actually bad since he needed the win to yes. get into the top cut. And uh, 
now you can think maybe if you think about why did David not play this Sycamore two rounds ago maybe he just realized I don't need to speed up this game I just need to start it out he is waiting for that timeout he knows I need a draw Günther needs a win and this is exactly what the best players in this case the German national champion does he knows exactly what he has to do to win uh, the whole tournament, not only this game, not only this match. Yeah. Günther is doing the best he can. David is saying, what are you doing, mate? <laughs> You're not drawing five prize cards in this round. Might as well stop right here. But these, ga these guys just love Pokemon so much, they keep playing. David <laughs> is saying, yeah. how many cards do I have? Do I want to knock out another Pokemon? Not that it mattered. It's my last turn. Let me shuffle that deck where you're not going to draw a card anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's some additional time because there was a judge called early on. Yeah, but it can't be more than two minutes actually. No. Yeah. It was actually... I think that's it. Yeah. And that's it. That's it. So... David realized exactly what he needs to do to advance to the top eight, and I think we will be seeing him in the top eight cut as well. Um, Günther, however, I think has just missed out on the opportunity to make it to the top eight. Seven other players will take his place. Yep. Um, now that this match has uh, pretty many games we've seen in so draw. far today that uh, got ended in a 1-1. One, one. So it was a 1-1 one, one of... High quality, I have to uh, Yeah, but admit. it's still sometimes sad to not uh, get the final result of that match. Yeah. I mean, uh, some of those games were still not decided, really. We couldn't say, who's going to win that? Games are shifting around, and we're sitting here then, and yeah, okay, it's a draw. David is advancing to the top eight, but what is the real result of a game? Especially if you have two decks like this. They are rather creative. We have seen a lot of Seismitoad, Eviltal, X decks. However, yep. these decks are very creative. I haven't seen Flareon being paired with Vespa Queen yeah, yet. I mean and I'm really curious to hear from him. We saw many Vespa Queens, and they got paired with Flareon, but the new one from Ancient Origins. Exactly, yes. The different types on your attacker. But he's really using eight main attackers, eight times Vengeance. And we saw it kind of works. I was skeptic before, but it worked out pretty well. And also for the live stream, I think it was very interesting to see a Selgor finally making an appearance here on a featured match uh, in a German Arena Cup. Now for the Swiss rounds, this will be wrapping up the action. We will be back in a couple of minutes with the top eight final matches. So we will be seeing three more TCG matches coming up very soon. So stay and tuned. getting more and more interesting. So Absolutely. Running. You're on my mind